Good evening. I'd like to call this meeting of the uh, Planning and Zoning Commission to order. It's our uh, Monday, April 11th, uh, 2022 regular meeting. We'd all please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And at this point in time, I'd like to introduce the members of the uh, commission as well as the staff that are here this evening. To my immediate uh, left is J.P. Benoit. He is our uh, vice chairperson. To my immediate right is James Fitzsimmons, commission member. Next to Jim is Jeff Cohan, also commission member. Uh, next to uh, Jeff is uh, David uh, Parent, who's an alternate on the commission. And next to David is... Uh, Jamie Hine, who's also an alternate on the commission at the uh, staff table. To my right is uh, Kevin Pagini, who is our uh, town planner. And next to Kevin is uh, Cheryl Ann Tubby, who is our reporting secretary. And I'm Jim Seichter, the uh, chairperson. First order of business is to uh, consider uh, approval of the minutes of our March 14, 2022 uh, meeting. Any commission members with any questions? Uh, Additions, corrections before I call for a motion. We have a motion. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we approve the Planning and Zoning Commission March 14, 2022 minutes. We have a motion to approve. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Fitzsimmons. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Seeing none. Okay, moving on to our uh, first agenda. Uh, item. Before I go to that, we're going to jump down to our public hearing. Item number two, which is a special permit, uh, 654 uh, North Colony Road. And that application has been withdrawn from the, uh, by the applicant, so that will not be obviously heard this evening. Uh, which brings us to uh, item number one, it's public hearing from the field of section 6.35 of Wallingford Zoning Regulations, which established a moratorium on development of for warehousing and or manufacturing uses within the Watershed Overlay Protection District. Uh, Mr. Benoit, if you please read the legal notice and then note all correspondence for the record. Sure. Uh, legal notice, application 903-22, repeal of section 6.35 of the Wallingford Zoning Regulations, which established a moratorium on development of warehousing and or manufacturing use within the Watershed Protection Overlay District. We have Section 6.35 of the Wallingford 
zoning regulations, which, uh, which establishes a moratorium on development of warehousing and or manufacturing uses within the watershed overlay protection district. We have a motion to close the public hearing. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Fitzsimmons, voting beginning with Mr. Hyatt. Yes. 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 And yes, public uh, hearings closed. Now do we have a motion on the uh, on the application? Yes, Mr. Chairman, I'd like, like to make a motion to um, approve application 903-22 to repeal of section 3. Point, I'm sorry, 6.35 moratorium on manufacturing and or warehousing uses in the watershed protection overlay district. Repeal section 6.35 entitled moratorium on warehousing and or manufacturing use in the watershed protection overlay district because regulations were not passed. We're passed. We're I'm sorry, we're passed. <coughs> I'll we, second. Second by Mr. Fifth, uh, on Mr. Fitzsimmons. Uh, voting beginning again with Mr. Hunt. Yes. 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 And yes. Application has been approved. Brings us to our uh, next order of business. It's old business number three on our agenda. It's a site plan for 445 square foot accessory apartment by Kay McDade at 11 Kinserky, Kinserky Drive. Is the applicant here? Yes. Gentlemen, if you please come forward uh, to begin. I'm sure you have a very extensive presentation. <laughs> and, uh, Mr. Benoit, if you please uh, note all correspondence for the record. Yes, Mr. Chairman. I have a uh, Planning and Zoning Inter-Office uh, Departmental Referral from the Town Engineer dated uh, February 15, 2022. We have a uh, memo of uh, an Inter-Departmental Referral from our Registered uh, Sanitarian February 16, 2022. Uh, we have a Inter-Departmental Referral Fire Marshal dated February 16, 2022. We have uh, a interdepartmental referral from our environmental planner dated February 14, 2022. And then we have a memo from Kevin Pagini to Kevin McDade uh, dated March 15, 2022. Thank you, Mr. Martin. If the applicant would please uh, name an address and give us just a very brief uh, presentation of what yeah. you're uh, Kevin McDade, 11 Kazersky Drive, Longford. I bought the house in July. It had, uh, it already had his lawn in there, and uh, then I got the letter from the town. So I was just trying to get everything in order to make it all legal and proper, and get everything all set. Okay. So the bottom line, you bought the house, you realized that it had an accessory apartment, wasn't approved, and you're looking at having it approved. Yes. Yeah. Any, uh, uh, Mr. Pagini, any, uh, any comments that you'd like to make? Uh, no, he just uh, came to our department and uh, wanted to correct it, so he uh, applied and I have no other comments on Good. It. Any commission members with any comments, questions for the applicant? No. Uh, seeing none, uh, again, this is not a public hearing. If any members of the public would like to comment, feel free to comment. Seeing none, uh, at this point in time, I'd entertain a motion on the application. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we approve application 204-22. Um, site plan approval request to construct a 445 square foot accessory apartment on uh, plans dated 128-2022 subject to one comment in our inner office memorandum from Vanessa Batista, registered sanitarian health department of the uh, to the planning and zoning department dated uh, February 15, 2022, and co co six copies of the approved site plan forward to the Planning and Zoning Commission. And the final approval by the CEO. Good. We have a uh, motion on the application. Any discussion by commission members? Seeing none, uh, entertain them. Uh, we have a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second. Second by Mr. Fitzsimmons. Voting beginning with Mr. Hyde. Yes. 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 And yes, your application has been approved. Have a good evening. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Brings us to uh, number four on agenda, new business site plan, merging of properties, and small service write-up edition at 406 Executive Dodge, at DBA Executive Dodge, Wallingford, 400 and 406 South Orchard Street. Again, Mr. Benoit, uh, if you please uh, note all correspondence for the record. The applicant, please... Uh, 
come forward in, uh, in preparing for your uh, presentation. Yes, we have an uh, uh, inner office memorandum from the fire marshal dated uh, March 14th, or sorry, March 22, 22. Uh, we have a inner office memo from an environmental planner March 16th, 2022. We have a inner office memo from the senior engineer water and sewer. Uh, to the Planning and Zoning Department on April 8, 2022. We have a inner office memo from Town Engineer dated April 6, 2022. And we have a site layout plan uh, received April 7, 2022. Thank you, Mr. Boyd. The uh, applicant's uh, representative, please introduce himself and begin his presentation. Sure. For the record, my name is Christopher Giuliano. I'm a licensed land surveyor and professional engineer with the firm Giuliano Associates. I maintain an office at 405 Main Street in the Association of Dodge. This evening, I'm here representing Executive Dodge Jeep and Ram with respect to another expansion of their facilities located at 400 and 406 South Orchard Street. On the board here, I have existing conditions, and just to orient everyone, South Orchard Street is on the left side of the map, and it merges with South Common Road, Route 5, also on the left side, and McKenzie Avenue is on the bottom of the map. 400 South Orchard is this large building, the uh, northern property, and 406 is the larger building on the southern property. Um, as many of you probably recall, at one time this northern building was Executive Fiat, so I apologize if I refer to it as Fiat, I kind of get stuck in my ways. I've worked on this property for almost 30 years now. So what the plan is, <clears throat> construct a small addition onto the Executive Dodge building, which is located right in this area, it's approximately 2,500 square feet. The location of the building or the addition would cause an issue with the setback between 406 and 405. So since this is property is technically being used for one purpose now, uh, Mr. Orsini, owner of Executive Dodge, decided that the best thing to do would be to merge the two properties, remove the interior lot line, and therefore we would not need any kind of variances or anything like that. The purpose of the addition is basically for service right up area. So when a customer comes in, they can pull in, they can either park in one of the uh, parking spots here, or what the desire is is that they would pull into the, the uh, right up area, they would meet with a technician, they'd be written up as far as what they needed to do on their car. The customer would then be able to walk through the addition into their existing facility, sit down in the waiting room. And then the technician would take the vehicle into the service area where it would be worked on. So basically the idea is ease, ease for the customers. No one's got to go out in the rain. It's kind of, uh, it's called white glove service. That's what Mr. Orsini basically likes about his facilities. He wants to make the everything from the buying experience to customer service. He wants to make it top notch. And this is just one more thing that he can do for his customers. So as part of this overall merging, I had went through and I redeveloped the uh, existing proposed parking layout. Um, as many of you probably realize from the existing plan, there are a number of parking spots throughout the site. Uh, I believe there were about 260 spots on the site. The problem being with it is a lot of them were not conforming according to the regulations. So since we were coming for you, I had to reconfigure the parking and actually make it easy. We'll go to the color coded plan, which basically lays out where the parking is, the type of parking. I've done this before for this commission with respect to executive, uh, I'm sorry, quality Subaru when we did the expansion on that facility. And I felt it worked, so we've done something small like this. Um, this way you can see what spaces are meant for customers, what space is meant for um, related to service portion, what spaces are going to be for display vehicles, and what spaces are for employees. Um, 
with this plan, when we get all code compliant parking on, the number of parking spaces drops down to 176. So, uh, and with respect to the actual site development and grading and drainage plan, there's not a lot of change. Um, if you're at all familiar with the facility, customers are able to walk in at the northwest corner of the building at grade. There is a door in the center of the building here, but customers actually have to step down a few steps to get into the facility. So as part of this addition, we're actually pulling out material from that corner so everything is back on one level so there will be no interior steps inside the building. So therefore, there's a little bit of regrading that goes on between the two buildings. Um, we are removing one dry well, but we are going to end up replacing it by creating a low spot here, keeping all the water on site. And as I said, it's just some minor grading. And if you recall, last year I was last you know, last year I was here in front of this commission for an addition on the Fiat building, and that still we still have that approval in place. We're not relinquishing it, and that's why the entire parking lot was redone as well. So. Um, it's pretty straightforward. Like I said, a small addition just for service write-ups. And uh, we're doing a new parking layout. And that's pretty much it. So if there's any questions, we'd be happy to answer them at this time. Mr. Pagini, before I go to the commission, any uh, comments that you'd like to make? Uh, no, all of your, all of your comments from weapons have been addressed. I'm yep. guessing. And I, have, I was told today I have administrative approval from okay. Mr. Vitality. So that's us. Yes. Yes. And I have no further comments. Commission members with questions for the uh, applicant. Seeing none, uh, this is a, it's not a public hearing, but any members of the public like to comment on the application, please come forward and name and address. Seeing none, I assume Mr. Uh, I, you, you have uh, no further comments, is that no correct? Further comments. Good. Okay. Uh, at this point in time, if there's no com further comments from commission members, I'd entertain a motion on the, uh, on the application. So I'm going to note for the motion as well. Uh, I just wanted to add in after the expansion, the size is 2,460 square feet. So, for the 2,460 square foot expansion. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we approve application 206-22 site plan approval request for the 2,460 square foot expansion of an existing service area and parking lot reconfiguration as shown on plans entitled site layout plan dated March 4th, 2022 and revised to April 5th, 2022 subject to one comments from the environmental planner Aaron O'Hare dated 4-1-2022. Two comments from the fire marshal's office dated March 21, 2022. Three comments from Eric Kruger, senior engineer, water and sewer division dated April 8, 2022. Four, an erosion and sediment control bond in the amount of $1,000. And five, six copies of the approved final plan forward to the planning and zoning office. Thank you. We have a motion on the application. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Fitzsimmons, voting beginning uh, with uh, Mr. Hines. Yes. Yes. <coughs> yes. Uh, yes. And yes, the application has been approved. Have a good evening, sir. Thank you. Sure. Brings us to our next item. Again, it's old business. It's a uh, site plan, medical office, New England uh, retail properties, okay. 8, 800 North Colony Road. While the applicant's coming forward to begin his presentation, uh, Mr. Minoy, if you please, the little correspondence for the directors. Mr. Chairman, I have on my desk uh, an inner office memorandum from the fire marshal's office dated or received March 22, 22. Have a inner office memo from uh, the junior engineer, water and sewer division to Kevin Pagini, town planner. Uh, dated March 29th, 2022. I'm sorry, March 31st, 2022. And then we have uh, drawings that are received April 7th, 2022. That's it. Good. Thank you, Mr. Benoit. Again, when the applicant said, Ready to make the presentation, just uh, name and address, please. 
Uh, good evening for the record. My name is Jim Cassidy, professional engineer and principal with the firm at LC Pearson and Cassidy. My office is located at 630 Main Street in Cromwell County. <coughs> I'm here tonight representing Village Retail Properties, uh, who is the prospective developer of a new uh, 3,000 square foot medical office building on a property owned by the Wallace LLC at 800 North Valley Road. Uh, the first map I have up before you is an existing condition survey. This property was before you back in 2017, at which time we received a site plan approval to construct the tractor supply uh, retail store. Uh, the property itself is outlined in red, consisting of about 4.35 acres of RF40 uh, 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 along the North County Road. I'm sorry. On the left hand side is North County Road. North is up on this page. Uh, to the bottom is uh, Beaumont Road. And then off to the north or the upper portion would be the Walmart uh, shopping center. Uh, as I said, in 2017, we received approval for the tractor supply. Uh, since such time, it's been constructed. The brown rectangle represents the tractor supply building, which is presently on the site, with a footprint of about 19,097 square feet. Uh, associated with the construction of that building, uh, we had to build a parking area. Um, access to that parking area was off of Beaumont, uh, mainly because uh, the, lake, the darker blue area is a water course, a perennial water course that's running in a westerly direction, then down across the entire frontage before it discharges <coughs> underneath North County Road at the southwesterly corner of the site. Um, presently, there are 74 parking spaces in front of the building. Uh, there's a second driveway off of Beaumont that provides access to a loading area to the rear. An additional eight parking spaces to the rear of the building. So in total, there's 82 parking spaces. Uh, when we had set up this property, um, we, we kind of left that area up front here um, for the possible construction of another building. At that point, it was quite honestly, we were looking at like an O'Reilly Automotive. Uh, they've been pursuing prospective uh, tenants over the past uh, five years. Uh, at this point, they have an urgent health care uh, facility that's looking at building on the site. Um, so what we're proposing to do is basically construct a new uh, building with a 3,000 square foot rectangle, or sorry, square foot area. Uh, it be located just to the west side of the parking area, right here at the northwest, or sorry, the southwest of the corner of the intersection of Palm Island, North Town Road. Um, as part of this application, we're not looking at constructing any new parking spaces. Uh, we'll be working with the existing parking lot. Uh, the only thing we'd be adding is a series of sidewalks up against the parking area, and then an additional sidewalk that went down this side um, to service the entrance uh, that would face out towards North County Road. Um, all the utilities uh, were actually constructed as part of the development of the tractor supply. Uh, so there's a sanitary sewer that we extended up the road. We'd be tying sanitary sewers uh, into that. In addition to, we'd be connecting, the, we extended the water up the road. We'll be connecting this building to the water. Um, for drainage, uh, all we're picking up is roof meters. Uh, the, roof, the, roof, the roof area is about 3,000 square feet. <coughs> if you would take a look at the utility plan that was submitted as part of the planning set. <coughs> this is a blow up of the utility plan. Uh, so, as I mentioned, there's a sanitary sewer running down the road. There's a ladder coming off already. Uh, we've been providing a new gravity ladder into that line. And then, once again, the water connecting into the water main that we're going to send it up. Uh, for drainage, uh, we're taking all the roof meters from the 3,000 square foot roof area. Uh, we're putting it into an underground infiltration system uh, that is designed to take uh, care of and infiltrate into the ground up to 100 year rain event. Uh, there's no other drainage proposed as far as part of the development of this property. There's no additional parking space to propose. Uh, I'll note uh, that we did go before the GBA. Uh, we did receive a variance for parking. Uh, per your zoning regulations, we're required to have 77 parking spaces for the track to supply, an additional 20 uh, for the medical office building at a rate of 150 for a total of 97 spaces. Uh, the reason for going for a variance is if you ever go out to track to supply at your peak time, which is a Saturday afternoon, which we studied throughout the entire winter or when we started this project, Peak number of cars are using in that parking lot is about 30. Uh, so there's about 54 extra parking spaces, so we felt that there's more ample parking and no need to actually construct more parking as part of this. So we did receive a variance on that. Um, we had actually also applied for a variance for the orientation of the building. Um, there's section 6.33 
uh, says that I need to have the front of the building face towards uh, North Colony Road or towards the thoroughfare. Um, we did go back. We did not receive a variance for that part of the application. Um, so we did go back and we had the architect actually do a little redesign of the building. <coughs> so this would be a rendering as you look at the south west Philly elevation. Um, so the parking is off in the distance here. Beaumont would be down on the bottom. Fort County would be off on my left. Um, so what we did is we uh, put an entry tower with storefront glass on the two corners and a door um, that actually faces out to North County Road. There will be a similar entry tower on the northeast corner, closer to the parking. Um, we did extend sidewalks across the entire frontage so people can actually come to this and use this as a front entrance to meet the requirements of regulation. Um, we have received some staff comments. Um, they seem to be minor in nature. Um, we received the comments uh, today from your water and sewer department, uh, the senior standard, and also um, from the fire marshal, uh, just basically wants us to assume that building plans uh, when it's time to actually construct this building. Uh, the other thing I'll note is if you take a look at the colors of the building, uh, we try to use very similar colors to the tractor supply building so it'll match uh, the other building on the site. Um, so you have, once again, the red, red lines, the red stripe. Uh, you have the lighter tan color, uh, it's actually called urban putty. Uh, then the darker um, masonry veneer, uh, with this, actually on this one we've added a stone veneer along the bottom section also, which uh, tractor supply does not have, so we try to um, step this one up a little bit more. So with that, I'm going to be short, and I'm going to include my presentation, and gladly answer any questions that you may have. Sure. Uh, Mr. Puccini, any comments? I just had one. I uh, think we discussed this at the meeting. Uh, I just wanted to add to the motion that any landscaping issues are fixed on the entire <coughs> site as part of the application, so I'll just release uh, that other bond if, if you know, you'll agree to that. There were some trees near Beaumont Road that were kind of coming out of the ground and may or may not be alive. I still need to look at that, but I figure if they fix it, part of this, we're going to be okay. So that was my, that was my <coughs> Commission members, any comments for the applicant? Mr. Pacin. Thank you. Um, I have a couple. On the plan, um, yeah. I do not see, and I'm older, a dumpster. So it's a medical office facility, so they don't use a dumpster. Most of their uh, waste is um, a hazard, so it's kept inside the building. The service comes in and picks it up. So they, did, they told us they don't need a dumpster, they don't need to roll out trash cans. So there'll be no dumpster outside? No dumpster outside. Okay. And then, you, you were very efficient in your um, presentation. The front door that will be facing five, will it be used? We set it up to be used. Yeah, we have to do the floor plan and everything to be used. So, but there's another door on this corner also. So there's going to be two doors. Right. So the front door facing five will be accessible, might not be used, but it, it will look like a front door. Correct. The reason I ask is, I think of Wells Fargo further down. Mm -hmm. The fr frontage face is five, but the entrance is in the rear. Mm -hmm. So, but the front looks fine and move five because it's frontage. Yeah. So, you putting a door in the front, um, as long as it's accessible. You know? Yes. Okay. And then um, a question through you, Mr. Chairman, to the town planner. Um, I don't see any comments from engineering. Uh, she had some. She had some comments at the last minute, so they, I included them in my initial approval because uh, they were kind of brought in at the last minute. So she had uh, just given out the applicant shall provide additional storage to handle the 100 year storm as required section And those were included in your notes as well. And that was her only comment? Yep. Okay. And then again, the question for the applicant. I assume the answer, but I, wanna, I don't want don't to make it a false assumption. Because we approved traffic supply with a building pad, so to speak, there's no, there was no need to go back to weapons. Um, so we, we had that with the environmental planner. Um, there's a question as to whether we need to go back. After going through it, um, all our building and our activity is greater than 50 feet away from the weapons area. Um, so there was, um, we, we had no need to go back. In addition to, um, they also have a requirement that says if I increase the impervious coverage by an additional 10,000 square feet, I would need to go back. The building is 3,000, the sidewalks are 1,500, 12, 45. So I didn't meet either of those criteria. So we did not need to go back to Wetlands with this. Okay. 
So again, through you, Mr. Chairman, to the town planner, do we have something from the environmental planner on this application confirming that? Uh, no, but she uh, confirmed it with Mr. Cassidy. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Simmons. Anyone else? Yes, Mr. Cohen. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just to follow up on uh, Mr. Fitzsimmons' comments, so <clears throat> there, there's no parking in the front or on the southern side? Correct. Okay. Um, and is this 24 by 7 operation or what are no, the hours? No, it's not 24. It's, a, it's a, basically a 9 to 5 to 8 block hours operation. It's not a 24 hour facility. Okay. Okay. Thank That's you. it. Thank you. Uh, I just have a question or two or comment. Uh, just following up with Mr. Fitzsimmons, you know, when you showed the uh, picture of the building, the front, it was difficult to see on the uh, portion of the building that's facing Colony Road. There's signage on that also. Is yes. that correct? It's the same signage that's on Beaumont. Is that right? Urgent puts that it, it is, and we had talked to the uh, zoning enforcement officer, and she told us that we're going to have to come back with a separate application for the signage. Okay. But the intent would be to have signage on both Beaumont as well as yes. the colony, uh, colony Road, so it's clear. Yep. And just one last thing, if we do approve this, I just like, as a condition of approval, that that ravine in the front, that that be cleared out before we issue a building permit. For quite some time there's been, you know, trees, and probably some of the brush could be cleaned up, but more importantly, there's a couple of trees, the trunks that have been laying love, there for love, months. We would love to remove the trees, um, but actually what was one of us to leave them. I don't think they want you to leave a, a large trunk of a tree that's been dead. It's been laying on its side for whatever. That's been there for a long time. Yeah, we would gladly remove it, but they did. Um, they wanted to leave us in. Yeah, she called oh, the, the trunk, that trunk, that dead tree, the trunk there? Yes. What's the reason for they that? They call them snags when they're out there housing for wildlife. Yes. Yeah, yeah. She, she has her reasons for keeping yeah. everything in there. We tried. We tried. Uh, it looks like hell. Uh, I can, I can uh, have her explain, explain it if you want to. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure she can explain. Is that going to make any sense to me? Well, apparently not. No. Okay. All right. At this point in time, uh, there's no further comments from uh, from the commission members. Uh, I'd entertain a motion on the application. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we approve application 207 22 800 North County Road. Site plan approval requests to construct a 3,000 square foot medical office building on plans entitled Site Plan Application for Proposed 3,000 Square Foot Medical Office, dated March 11, 2022, and revised to April 6, 2022, uh, with the following uh, recommendations or, or uh, Conditions. Long day already. Uh, one, comments from Scott Shipman, Junior Engineer, Water and Sewer Division, dated March 29, 2022. Two, comments from the Fire Marshal's Office, dated March 21, 2022. Three, applicant shall provide additional storage to handle the 100 year storm as required in section 4.12. Four, an erosion and sediment control bond in the amount of $2,500. Five, six copies of the approved final plan, uh, final plans forwarded to the planning and zoning office. And six, previous landscaping issues resolved and satisfied by the planning and zoning office. We have a motion on the application. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Simmons. Voting beginning with Mr. Hine. Yes. 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 <clears throat> and yes, the application has been approved. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Mr. Cheney, just a comment. Uh, yeah. Just in the future, uh, can we make certain that we have the comments from, you know, from engineering and from environmental center or from whatever, uh, yeah. uh, you know, whatever uh, offices uh, that we are departments uh, that we require? I think that'd be, sure. you know, helpful for all commission members. All right, moving on. We'll go to item number uh, six, and I'll let you take over the rest of the agenda. Our affordable housing plan. Okay, so this is just a uh, discussion. I don't know if you had any comments. I haven't even had a chance to fully go through the entire TF document, but I did uh, work on it with uh, the uh, South Central Regional Council of Governments um, in coordination with RKG Associates and uh, the Wallingford Housing Authority as well. Um, so I'm 
questions or um, maybe I do a brief overview? Can you just give us a brief overview? I read through and I suspect most commission members did. I thought there was a lot of very good information in here. Yes, it is a uh, requirement by the state that uh, every town adopt a affordable housing plan by June 1st of this year. Uh, so as part of uh, uh, SCROG, they, they were, they're, they're coordinated with uh, all the communities that wanted to uh, have assistance in the creation of this document um, in the original council of governments. Uh, so they, they did a demographics and housing market conditions study uh, community overview, uh, gave definitions of what affordable housing is. Uh, as part of the process, I uh, actually sent out an uh, email to planning and zoning commissioners if they were uh, interested in participating in some of the meetings. And Mr. Benoit and Mr. Parent um, participated in some of the meetings. Uh, they looked at the housing goals as well as the locational analysis, and uh, they just looked at uh, the goals that we want as a community to uh, hopefully achieve as to achieve more affordable housing in Longford. So that's, that's probably as brief as I can get that, but I can certainly answer um, any other questions that you may have. Anyone with any questions, comments, Mr. Simmons? I, I know I've, I've sat up here a bit, but I always have this question on the affordable housing. Are we not allowed to count senior housing that has federal assistance as affordable? I believe we are because they they state that one of the goals is to increase senior housing. So as far as the affordability point, I believe it is. But I can certainly double check on that. You know, I mean, there's a there's a large facility on the west side of town mm -hmm. that has different housing options. I want to make sure that whatever there is deemed affordable is included in our numbers, so to speak, because in the past, I, I, I was unsure always how they mm -hmm. equate that. I mean, a nursing home would not, because right. that's not a rental, but yes. if, if you had an independent living mm -hmm. opportunity that you got some subsidy for, I would hope that could be counted, because I don't know how much more we, I don't know how much we have total, Right. In town, but. Yeah, I can certainly definitely double check on what it is. I, I, when I read it, I didn't see it. I didn't okay. see it talking about that. I mean, I know the, we're only halfway to our 10% goal with the state, but, right. but if we could add some senior housing right. to our numbers, it might, it might reflect it. And, and again, if I missed it, I apologize, but I, okay. I was looking for some reference to senior assisted living as a countable Okay. So I know we mentioned it as part of the goals. So I don't know if they count currently what we have as being definitely checked. They, they didn't go through all the, the numbers with me in depth yet, but Not meet the 
uh, ten percent um, housing, um, uh, affordable housing uh, threshold. Yes. What is? Uh, do you, Do you have any sense as to how many towns in Connecticut do meet that threshold? Oh, it's a, I'm not sure. I believe it's roughly ten percent. Yeah. yeah, I'm not. I'm not trying to put you on the spot. If you don't know, you don't know. That's funny. Um, I know. There, I know it's roughly the rough, and maybe twelve percent. Yeah. And how have we had appeals filed under um, the state statute uh, in the past? Uh, I don't know, but I can certainly look into the history of any appeals. Uh, not that I know of in the past. It's, 10 years or so, but I can certainly check. But we have had a couple of projects that were uh, approved recently. So. Yeah, I, and what, one of the things I, I, um, I would think is with affordable housing, you want to have affordable housing sort of in a convenient location so that people can walk mm -hmm. to shops or uh, grocery stores or, or that sort of thing. And I, I was just wondering, um, do we have any site, does the Housing Authority or the town have any sites in mind along the five that might be um, more convenient um, for affordable housing type projects? Uh, we don't have anything in mind, but I know Walling for Housing Authority has you know, been looking at the prospect of possibly something maybe a set of housing zone, something along those lines. Um, and currently, our zoning in the Route 5 district doesn't allow for residential housing, so that may be something to eventually look at. Um, we do, I would try to hopefully in this video push for more adaptive reuse in those zones because we do allow adaptive reuse uh, for housing. But um, no, mainly we're looking at locational analysis of our current uh, main housing instead of housing some districts that are current affordable housing districts. So yeah. um, I believe speaking with Longford Housing Authority too, we're looking at potentially maybe changing, you know, looking at maybe changing their zoning in that area so they don't have to go for a special permit every time they want to do something because they are located in an R18 zone. So that would be something I would have to obviously discuss with the commission if you know, something would come up. But um, this does make it's made my life a little bit tough on them because every time they want to change anything uh, near on Waterbrook Drive, uh, they have to come for special permit. Yeah, I, I, you know, I, I think, you know, I'm all for affordable housing. I just wonder, if, you know, I, I know I have affordable housing um, around the corner from my house, mm -hmm. and um, I often wonder whether that um, that's the most or, or that would, that's the ideal location for it. I don't you think it's the ideal location, no. Yeah. Uh, we're looking more, yeah, along, along bus routes, along transit lines. Um, so we're hopeful that, you know, in the future that you know, we could come up something more along the lines of those areas to where people can more easily set up, more easily accessible to public affordable housing to get transit opportunities. And, Therefore, easier to get to work. So I believe that was in one of the goals is to uh, locate housing around transit uh, areas. Yeah. Anyone else? I guess I have just a, a couple questions. There's one thing about just with the state with the, the affordable housing plan. It just never made any sense to me. Mm -hmm. it, it's that. The, I guess based on the state statute, correct me if I'm wrong, the affordability period has to be for 20 years, I, I think a minimum of 20 years or is it 30 years, there's a minimum for the affordable, uh, how these units have to, be, uh, have to be affordable. And that being said, it just, it, it just makes absolutely no sense because today <laughs> we could be at 10% yeah. and then uh, in two years as uh, projects that were developed right. 10 years ago, 20 years ago, now they're rolling off and those units are no longer affordable. 
So now you have to keep generating more and more and more. And that just doesn't make any sense to me. I could never figure out why uh, they essentially can't be in, you know, in perpetuity, if you would. I, I'm not sure when we approved one a long time ago that we might have uh, had that as a condition. Or, and certainly, I think in one, we extended it more than the, the 40 years or the, or the 50 years. But again, it just doesn't, it just doesn't make any sense to me. I mean, I, I think we're all, you know, uh, certainly in, in support of affordable housing, uh, and I know certainly in our incentive housing and some of the other areas, I think we're all disappointed that we haven't, you know, seen some development in those areas. But, you know, that's that's just something that makes absolutely no sense to me. Uh, I just have a just a couple, some very minor comments. One is just a. I think we just need a word included. I'm, you know, if you start on page 26, then go to page 27. The bottom of the page, maybe I'm reading it wrong. It says, based upon data gathered by the Connecticut Department of Economic and Community Development, Wallingford has seen net increases in housing stock over the past 20, 20 years, meaning there has been units constructed, then there were uh, demolitions over any given year. I think the, year, the word more needs to be included there somewhere. Unless I'm I mean, I could be reading it wrong, but maybe there has been more units constructed than the word demolitions? Yes. I'll make that note. Yeah, I noticed some typos that are up towards the other document. Again, this is a, this is a draft. Yeah, so no, I appreciate any, it. Uh, any comments, <coughs> definitely. Yeah. Email to me, and I will get right to Scrog with those comments, and hopefully all those changes will be made. Yeah, and then there's just another one. In some ways, I feel maybe a little hesitant on talking about bringing it up, but on page 14, the end of the first paragraph, where it says, you know, it says Wallingford also saw a slight increase in residents who identify as Latinx, and you know, I, I, I just want to make certain that, you know, when I, when I looked up as far as the definition and, and how people have done it, certain ethnic groups, you know, I saw there was only about 2 to 4 percent of individuals in that ethnic group that identify as that, and there's maybe 70 percent that weren't aware of it, and another 40 percent that may find that that may be a little, um, they feel uncomfortable. So just my suggestion would be, you know, we have our Spanish community of Wallingford. I mean, they're very involved with the community in our yeah. town. I would just say, you know, we should have some kind of an outreach and sure. simply, you know, ask them how they would would see their, you know, their ethnic group being, you know, being defined. Uh, again, sure. how, you know, how a certain community uh, wants to be identified, that is, I think that should be up to them. So I just, I just think let's just have a little bit of outreach on that and uh, just get what their, uh, you know, what their sense would be and how they would just like that. Uh, how they would like to be defined. And again, I don't have any issue with, uh, with how any group would like to be defined. I just think that we should just have the outreach with that. Sure. They were Anyone actually, else? They were actually distributing surveys as part of this. So I yeah, no, exactly. Again, I just, you know, I saw that and I just, just raised just a question for me. That's absolutely hard. Yes, you Yes, keep coming. So, um, you know, uh, Eugene, senior regional planner yeah. um, gave us heads up on this uh, several months ago. He, he actually gave a pretty good, you know, overview explanation on a lot of this. And I'm sure, you know, if we wanted, he'd be willing to come in and, you know, give his, his talk if, um, you know, we we're so inclined. Um, I'm just, you know, this does say final draft, so there, there will be a couple yeah. other revisions to it. And we do have a meeting on Thursday, so I'll bring up a couple yeah. of these uh, comments. Good. But I, I would say, you know, when I was reading through this, I thought there was just a lot of very good, you know, very good information in here, uh, you know, concerning housing, just concerning the, uh, you know, the community. I thought they did, a, in my mind, just a very good, uh, very good job with this. And it was very, you know, to me, it was just very eye-opening. One of the uh, <coughs> comments from the, the regional commission is, uh, you know, what if towns do not ever meet this mm -hmm. requirement? And there's, there's really no answer to that. Yet. 
I know we have a, a member of the public here this evening. I'm not sure if he would like to comment on this. No, I apologize for being a little bit late. I was expecting your agenda to go longer, and I didn't hear time to listen to all this. I'm really just kind of here to okay. listen more than anything. No Good. specific comments right now. Okay. okay. Thank you. So if there's no further comments on this, uh, Mr. G, if you would uh, move down our, uh, our list, please. So the next discussion item is uh, holding a possible workshop on the state legislation on accessory apartments, the residential parking requirements, and then the another topic of discussing the density in the incentive housing zone. Uh, I give you a packet that kind of states the uh, ADU, the accessory zoning unit, the accessory department uh, requirements in a bit uh, more concise fashion than the actual public act that I included. And then the, uh, also the parking requirements to a sort of uh, explained. Um, so the state legislation would, if you don't opt out of it as a commission, so I uh, gave you the opt-out language in your notes as well as in this guide. Um, it would require it would require that uh, no more than one parking space for each studio or one better unit can be required and no more than two parking spaces for each dwelling unit or with two or more bedrooms uh, can be required. So currently our regulations uh, have more parking requirements than that so it would be up to the commission as to whether or not to opt out or discuss this other than just uh, reporting me. Um, so those are the workshops. We would that. need to act on that, Kevin, by, uh, by January, uh, January 2023. 2023. Correct. So I figure start now, start the process, and then yeah. um, hopefully we can discuss all that with one workshop. If not, maybe we can do parking and dwelling, accessory dwelling units in one workshop, and then maybe discuss the set of housing zone uh, density in another workshop. How would commission members like to proceed? We'd like to go for all three at one, uh, two and a one, uh, and just how we'd like to, to handle this. I guess from my perspective, you know, I, I look at the incentive housing zone and the, the density there, uh, I think that's something that you know, we should look at uh, certainly much sooner than, than later. Uh, you know, there has been you know, some interest, I think as we all know, on one particular property. There may be interest in, in other properties uh, you know, in the general downtown area, and I think the the sooner that we uh, look at those those regulations and look to make perhaps some changes in the density, uh, you know, the better that that would uh, you know the better that that would be. Uh, you know, it seems like with the accessory apartment, we have a, a little bit more time on that as well as you know residential parking requirements. Certainly, don't want to keep kicking that down the road, uh, but just looking for suggestions from commission members, uh, you know, for a workshop and, and I guess from my standpoint, I'm not sure if the end of April is good or if the maybe the first week in May might be good for commission members. Mm -hmm. Although I know Mr. Fitzsimmons is going to be on a long, very long vacation. <laughs> but uh, how does uh, again how does commission members feel and how, how would they like to uh, how would they like to handle this? Anyone? Question. Yes. Uh, Mr. Parents. I think we could handle three topics in one night. I think some, uh, my general sense is sometimes it gets a little bit bogged down, and by the time we get to the third one, I think, candidly, we're kind of looking at the clock and saying, let's try to, let's try to move this on. Right. So, yeah, I, I would think that, you know, uh, two at the most. So, you know, again, if we'd like to go one and two or two and one. Yes, Mr. Hine. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I agree with your suggestion. I think the incentive housing zone one, I think, will take up more time than the other two, and I think it's actually more pressing uh, yep. than the other two, and so I, I think that probably is the way to go. Good. Just do one. Yeah, just do one. So. All right, so we'll schedule the first workshop will be for the incentive housing zone, and again, it comes down to would we like to do it the uh, you know the end of April or the uh, sometime in uh, 
uh, in May. My general sense would be uh, it may give Mr. Pagini a little bit more time to develop some thoughts on this uh, if we do it in May, but again, I'm, I'm open to whatever. Early May, folks. Yes, early May, that's what I was saying. If we did April, there'd be three meetings this month. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Exactly. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I say that loud? <laughs> <laughs> yes, you did. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. I'll, I'll send out a uh, send out a doodle poll and then get a yeah, that'll be great. And then we can, uh, you know, if the uh, in our uh, either in our we'll see how that workshop goes, and then we can decide on scheduling a workshop on those those two other uh, two other two other items. So, so definitely not. The okay. Yes, that's correct. In, in May. So you will be getting those receipts in the mail. I'm still okay. working on some uh, final plans. So there's a couple of violations that are coming out. So. Right. And then continuing down the rest of our agenda. Uh, so workshop. So the bond releases and reductions. Uh, as I just stated, the site plan for tractor supply, uh, which is the same site as we just heard. Uh, can go ahead and be released. Do I have a motion on that uh, recommendation? Mr. Chairman, can I make a motion that we uh, release the bond for application 203-18, site plan, tractor supply, 801 North County Road. Do we have a motion to release the bond? Do we have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Fitzsimmons. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? It's been approved. And I'm just moving down, uh, seeing election of officers. Mr. Allenson is not here, so obviously we'll skip over that for the next, for another month. And uh, again, Mr. Pagini, we're for uh, administrative approvals, then the ZBA decisions and enforcement law. Uh, any questions on administrative approvals? I see none. Okay. And, uh, any questions on ZBA decisions? Any questions on decisions? Seeing none, any questions on uh, the April 18th meeting for the ZBA? And, uh, see, I see none, and the final would be our zoning enforcement report. Yes, so there has been, uh, just wanted to say that there has been some movement at the uh, Iron Horse equipment, so it looks better, and they are coming in May for a site plan again. Some movement on that, um, and Amy did revamp the uh, the report, so hopefully it shows a little bit more current material. Um, if that is what we're looking for. Let me know, and I can relay that back to her. As to she's still uh, it's still sort of a work in progress. She said that she's trying her best to convey uh, the more recent ones. Anyone have any questions on the go on? And seeing none, I guess at this point in time, uh, if there's no other uh, business coming before the commission, I see it's just before 8 o'clock. We can all get home to see the load sailing, the load deck sailing. Uh, so at this point in time, I'd entertain a uh, motion to adjourn. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we adjourn the going for planning and zoning commission for April 11th. Is that a second? Second. Second by Mr. Simmons. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions. Thank you. <laughs>